Well, hey, boys and girls. I know I haven't put up anything for a while, but between this COVID virus uh, pandemic and some recent surgery I've had, uh, I've been pretty much stuck at home like a lot of you have. I thought this might be a good time to make a video about traveling solo. I've thought about this for quite a while, and after watching one from 40 times around, I guess I got the inspiration and the time finally to do it. Of course, he's a bit more eloquent than me and certainly a better speaker. I'll try to find his link and put it in the description box uh, if I can figure out how to do that. But there were a few things that I'd like to add from my own perspective on the subject. Now, to back up a little, I know I'm not describing the video you're seeing while I'm talking. I needed something more to show besides my old ugly face to look at. I don't even like looking at myself in the mirror anymore. That's my daughter up front on a day ride we made last year up to Lake City, Colorado. Secondly, I appreciate all the views and comments and subscribers I've gotten from my couple of how-to videos, but I want to be totally honest with you. Those how-tos are not the purpose of having this channel. I put this thing up about a dozen years ago to promote my daughter's music. But when she and the band got really popular, they got their own channel and website and handlers and producers and all that goes with it. So this channel stayed dormant for a good while, and I decided to reformat it a year or so ago for some travel adventures. I hate doing product reviews because they're all subjective and a real pet peeve of mine. But I won't get into that and all the whys and wherefores. So back to the subject of motorcycle adventures. I'm one of those bikers you'd call a purist. I don't need a stereo, a screen with weather, maps, and game of the week, or whatever all that stuff does. If you do, that's fine. Everybody their own taste. I just don't want the distraction from the enjoyment of the journey. I mean, hell's bells, I got an iPhone if I get lost or want to know what the weather's doing. It doesn't really matter what kind of bike you have or what bells and whistles are on it. The point is to just be like Nike and just do it. I've been riding for nearly 65 years and I get so sick and tired of these so-called experts telling you about the best bike for you. Whether it's a 250 or 135 pound horsepower smoke fire and testosterone breathing half ton of iron. It's the bike you have and it's the bike you like. And don't be concerned to it if it's referred to it as entry level either. That's the stupidest damn term anyone has ever come up with. Ever heard of an entry level automobile? When I was 70, I rode sportsers from Alabama to Washington State and back twice and once without a windscreen. I enjoyed every mile of it. There's a video called Alyssa's Journey. Go look it up. She's a young girl that rode from Washington State the entire perimeter of the United States on a little ninja all by herself. She makes my five and 10,000 mile cross countries look like child's play. And girls, you can do it too. You should know by now that you can do anything a man can do and you probably do it better. Now, I'm not a Harley or nothing else type. True that my videos, I'm on Harleys, but I've owned a box car load of bikes. My Japanese and European bikes were great, too. Since I've been videoing, I've been on three of my Harleys. I still own two, an S-Series Sporty that's in this video, and a Road King. I am in the market for a brand new bike, but more likely it'll come from Bavaria or Austria or Japan because it's better suited technologically for what I do. Anyway, my Harley may, Harley may go belly up, you know, in my humble opinion. I think most of their problems they brought on themselves, but that's another subject for another time. Let's talk about packing. Most of the time, we overpack. And boy, I could tell stories about me doing that. <laughs> When, when I started serious traveling back in the early to mid 70s, I made a list of everything I took, even down to the toothpicks. And, and when I returned from each trip, I went over the list and marked off anything I took that I didn't need and added things I needed that I didn't take. As a result of that, the list got smaller and smaller every year. I still do that. 
What I found out is one doesn't need any more for a three-week trip than is needed for a three-day trip. And the sport of backpacking has really improved the technology of equipment uh, for camping. And smaller, better, lighter. Tents will pack into the size of a loaf of bread. Pocket rockets instead of Coleman stoves and on and on. I mean, go to an outfitter for your equipment. You'll be amazed. And if you stay in motels, you won't even need that. But what about the psychology of solo trips? And to me, that's the biggest reward. I have nothing against group rides. I've been on many. I know the fun, camaraderie, and the lifetime friends that can come from these things. I also know the planning and effort it takes to accommodate a group. In the 90s, I was director of a large motorcycle club, almost 600 members. It was great, and it was also almost a full-time job. But the solo trip, <coughs> excuse me, like the word solo, stands alone. You know, I never plan anything other than my objective. And in recent years, that has been to hook up with my daughter, wherever she might be in the West, and we take off on an adventure. She's a ranger with her own bike. When I leave home, I have no idea which way I'll turn at the end of my driveway. If the sun is on my back in the morning, I'm headed west. If the sun is in my face in the afternoon, well, I'm headed west. I love the back roads because that's where you really need to go to get to know America. I stop when I need to. I eat when I'm hungry and sleep when I'm tired. I have no watch. I have no plan. And no day has a name. Now there's a lot of freedom in that. Having no idea of what the next day will bring and enjoying whatever it does. You're not really on an adventure. You're in the adventure. You're part of it. You're not bringing your climate and your comfort zone with you. You feel it. You smell it. You taste it. Yeah, it may rain or even storm, but that's just part of it. You may wonder if you'll make it through something. and uh, But when you do, you'll look back and realize it was awesome. And you were proud. <laughs> you were proud that you made it. Something happens to me, and I've been told the same by others, is a shift in your mental process. Some of the things we get so caught up in at home become trivial. And after the first couple of hundred miles, information coming in is in the moment and, and life is where your feet are. Your brain begins to debrief. I mean, some things come to the surface and you may not have thought about that and in years. It could be something you need to deal with and you do because well you're alone in a private bubble and all your surroundings just don't care. <laughs> I, I guess that's what you call true uh, mental therapy. You know, there's a lot of incredible places in this country to experience. And to myself and others like me, that experience is tenfold from two wheels. Other places, the people you meet, other cultures and ideas are all taken in. Folks tend to talk to a lone biker from a far place. They're curious about you and you learn about them. It may be brief, but it becomes a line in your story. My feelings always remain for quite a while when I return from an adventure or a misadventure. I try to hold on to it as long as I can. I may not even turn on the TV for a week. I seem to remain on the adventure, contemplate the next. 
but like me and I think you will too come to appreciate those incredible places you've seen in your effort to get there and they'll become even more important so we'll see you next time uh, peace love rock and roll and uh, y'all all try to try to be nice to each other it's really not that hard to do